fifth grade families today we're going to be talking about decimal forms and the first two that we're going to talk about are standard and word forms and these are being brought to you today by the strange case of origami yoda which is a book that your fifth grade teachers here at Weiss have been reading to the students to instill a love of learning. It's a hilarious book about a boy who gives very good advice to his middle school classmates through his origami Yoda, which he wears on his finger. It's hilarious, and we there's a whole series of these books. So we were hoping when we read one of them to the students that it will instill this desire to want more, to want more. So. Consider reading it, moms and dads. Decimal forms, standard, and word. Standard form simply means the number form of a decimal. For example, if I have 1 and 389 hundredths, this is the numeric version of a decimal, and that is called standard form because it's standard. Word forms are when we take the standard form and we write it in words. I know, pretty tricky there. So in the same instance, because I can say my decimal, I can write it. I would say 1 and 389 hundredths. So let's just practice a few more of these. I have a decimal. It has a whole number, a decimal point, and a little bit, uh, we have a part of a hole right behind that decimal point. So this is called standard form, again, because this is what we're accustomed to seeing. Word form is translating this into words. So you want to be able to say these decimals in order to write them in words. This says 1,364 and 17 hundredths. If I can say it, I can write it. So here I go. 1,364 and... 17 hundredths. Remember, there is a definitely a distinction between hundreds place value and hundredths place value. Let's try another one. Let's do something with a zero. Before the decimal point. Now we don't say zero and, we just say what's behind the decimal point. We're going to say this is a whole number, and then the last bit is the final place value. So, as we've learned with our place value charts, this is the tenths, hundredths, thousandths, ten thousandths. So, I would say this as 143 ten thousandths. Capiche? Hey, fifth grade families of Weiss Elementary. Today we're going to be doing the second part of decimal forms, and it's being brought to you today by my nail polish color velvet rope. Painted it last night, and uh, I'm kind of liking it, just for you. Okay, today we're going to be talking about decimal forms. We learned standard form. We learned word form. We are going to take that to the next level by essentially dissecting a standard form by place value. So I'm going to put a decimal here and I'm going to walk you through that process. So I'm going to put 496 and 273 thousandths. Now remember a very important thing with decimals is knowing how to say them because it allows us to put them in expanded form and to put them into word form. 
And the only way that you can really get better at that is knowing and understanding the place value system, which we've made a video for already. So here I go, expanded form. Essentially, I am going to be breaking down this decimal by place value. So if I have a four in the hundredths place, I am going to write 400. If I have a nine in the tens place, I am going to write 90. Now I'm going to add that to the six and the ones place. Now I'm working behind the decimal point. We are encouraging students to always put a zero before the decimal point just to alert people that it is coming. This two will fall in the tenths place. Now the seven has to fall in the hundredths place. So I make that happen by adding a zero in the tenths place. And lastly, I have to get my three to the thousands place. Again, the zero before the decimal point. And then we are going to have two zeros for the tenths hundredths place, and now we have a three in the thousands place. So there we are, expanded form. Let's try that just one more time before we move on to expanded form powers of 10. I'll make this one a little simpler. Let's do 68 and 4 hundredths. 6 is in the tens place, so we are going to do essentially 6 times 10, which is 60, plus 8 in the ones place, which is essentially 8 times 1. And we have nothing in the tenths place, so if there's nothing there, we don't put anything in our expanded word form. Now we have a four in the hundredths place. We're going to put our decimal point after the zero. And we are going to put the four in the hundredths place just as it is here in standard form. All right. Taking that to the next level, expanded form powers of 10. I'm going to repeat that same decimal I used a moment ago. Now this time, instead of writing 400, I'm actually going to be doing 4 times 100. So we're dissecting it down even further. I'm not going to put 90. I'm going to put 9 times 10. I'm not going to put 6. I'm going to put 6 times 1. I'm not just going to put 2 in the hundredths place. This time, I am going to multiply 2 times a tenth in fraction form. And here we go. We're going to do the same thing here, 7 times a hundredth. And lastly, I know, look at this thing, it's so long. 3 times a thousandth. So here we go. I'm, can you see it all? That is very, it's a very long expanded form, powers of 10. But you're probably wondering, what is the point of this? And we're preparing students for an advanced math that they'll use both in upper levels of math and in science classes, scientific notation. Let's do another. We have 68 and 4 tenths. Let's do this one in expanded powers of 10. So 6 is in the tens place, so we're going to do 6 times 10. 8 is in the ones place, so we're going to do 8 times 1. 4 is in the hundredths place, so we are going to multiply 4 times a hundredth in fraction form. And that is expanded powers of, expanded form powers of 10. Again, brought to you by Velvet Rope. Have a wonderful day, Weiss families. <laughs>